Dear friends, a warm welcome to this rare set of 50 data migration interview questions. And before we go ahead, don't forget to watch the previous amazing tutorials and interview questions. Link for the playlist and videos are in the description box. For the basics of data migration, migration testing and the migration tools, please log on to softwaretestingportal.com. So let's get started now. Question. What do you understand by data migration? answer so friends this is the most basic question however we need to be ready with a proper systematic answer during the interview the interviewer wants you to tell them what this field is all about data migration is one of the simplest questions that you can be asked in a data migration interview data migration is a process that includes moving data between formats computer systems and storage types we can also say that it is the process of selecting, preparing, extracting, and transforming data and permanently transferring it from one computer storage system to another. Question 2. What are the six critical data migration types? Answer. Data is stored on various media in files or databases, and is generated and consumed by software applications, which in turn support business processes, the need to transfer and convert data can be driven by multiple business requirements, and the approach depends on those requirements. The major migration steps are as follows. Storage migration. Data center migration. Application migration. Database migration. Business process migration. And data migration to the cloud. Question 3. Why do we need data migration? Answer. There are many reasons your enterprise might need to undertake a data migration project, upgrading, changing or merging systems. For example, you might be replacing servers or storage devices or consolidating or decommissioning data center. Data migration is also an essential step in the overall process of migrating on-premises IT infrastructure to a cloud computing environment. Question 4. Can you explain the steps for successful data migration? Answer. 1. Design a strategy. Selecting a data migration strategy depends on the need for data migration. Is it because the organization is consolidating systems following an acquisition or a merger or is it because of data overload? 2. Assess the data source and analyze before migrating data. You must know what you're migrating, as well as how it fits within the target system. 3. Build a migration solution. Since data migration is a one-time and large activity, it's crucial to get it right. 4. Collect and cleanse data. This step involves removing data which is not required, compressing the remaining content, and converting data into the desired format. 5. Sort and validate data. Once you have profiled the data into a high-quality and usable format, the next step is to categorize it according to the migration requirements, and assess the data rules and check if they are working the way they are supposed to, and watch for any exceptions in your data flow. 6. Migrate. This is the final step in which everything falls into place. The steps mentioned above will give you well-organized and clean datasets. 7. Conduct a live test. It's important to test the data migration design with real data to ensure the accuracy of the implementation and completeness of the application. 8. Audit. Once the implementation has gone live, set up a system to audit the data in order to ensure the accuracy of the migration. Question 5. What are the data migration strategies? Answer. Big Bang. Migration. Trickle. Migration. In a Big Bang data migration, as the name suggests, full transfer is completed within a limited window of time. Live systems experience downtime while data goes through ETL processing and transitions to the new database. It all happens in one-time boxed event, requiring relatively little time to complete. The pressure can be intense, as the business operates with one of its resources offline. This risks a compromised implementation. Trickle migrations, in contrast, complete the migration process in phases. During implementation, the old system and the new are run in parallel, which eliminates downtime or operational interruptions. Compared to the Big Bang approach, trickle implementation can be fairly complex in design. However, usually reduces risks. Question. What are the advantages and disadvantages of Big Bang and trickle migration? Answer. 
Advantages of Big Bang migration are less costly, usually less complex and all changes happen one time only, in a relatively short space of time. Advantages of trickle migration include less prone to expensive surprises, zero downtime required, as the migration is incremental and easy rollback, if a single phase fails, it's only that phase that needs to be rolled back and repeated. Disadvantages of a big bang are a high risk of expensive failure as problems may be discovered after complete migration, if the migration fails, a complete rollback is required. And last, it requires downtime. Disadvantages of a trickle approach include more expensive and it requires to maintain multiple live environments. Question: What are the best practices of a successful data migration? Answer: 1. Understand the data usage. 2. Assess the environments. 3. Verify business requirements. 4. Back up the data. 5. Stick to the strategy. 6. Test, test, test. Question: What is meant by the term snapshots as it relates to data migration? Answer: The interviewer is continuing to ask technical questions about various terms and aspects of a data migration system. As mentioned earlier, the majority of this interview will involve either operational or technical questions. Snapshots are copies of read-only data which is stored in a master table. The primary use of a snapshot is to maintain a copy of the master table at a remote site so that it can either be accessed quickly or replicated if needed. Question: What is the purpose of data profiling in the data migration system? Answer: This is another operational question by which the interviewer is trying to determine your knowledge of this particular operation within the data migration process. Data profiling is a careful examination of the scope, quality, and content of a data source to enable a data migration system to be built. Its purpose is to verify that the data source has been well maintained before it is migrated to the data warehouse. If done effectively, the data will require minimal transformation and human intervention to load directly into the tables of the data warehouse. Question: What is partitioning in data migration? Types of partitions and what benefits they bring to data migration? Answer: Note that this question has three parts. The interviewer is asking a general question about partitions and specific questions about the types of partitions and their benefits. Make sure you reply to each part of the question. Partitioning in the practice of data migration is the subdivision of transactions. The two types of partitions in data migration are round robin and hash partitions. Partitions are used to improve the performance of the data migration process. Question: Can you tell me the names of the three layers in a data migration system? Answer: There are three layers in a data migration system. The first is the source layer which is the layer where the data first lands. The next layer is the integration layer where the data is stored after it has been cleansed. The third and final layer is the dimension layer where the presentation layer stands. Question: Why is it important to have real-time data migration into a data warehouse? Answer: This question is meant to explore your understanding of the link between data migration and the business objectives of the organization. The data migration in itself is only as useful as the information it provides to the organization to run the business. The purpose of a data warehouse is to provide useful information to the business and its decision makers. Real-time data migration into the warehouse enables the decision makers to have the latest data with which to manage the business. This is especially important for companies that use OLTP such as retailers or financial firms. Question: Can you explain the key features of a data migration system within a data warehouse? Answer: An interviewer will ask this type of question early in the interview to get you talking, to learn more about you, and to extract information they can use for subsequent questions. The data migration system, which is also known as the ETL system, is the foundation of a data warehouse. A properly designed data migration system retrieves data from a variety of sources, scans and confirms the data and enforces data quality and consistency standards, and finally delivers data in a readable format. This enables application developers to use the data to build applications and end users to use it to make informed decisions. Question: What are the day-to-day -day functions a data migration system performs? 
Answer. The interviewer is asking this operational question to understand your knowledge and experience in this field. Data migration systems perform several different functions. This begins with building the development, test, and production suite of the data migration processes. It will then analyze and extract data from the sources identified by the operators. The system also verifies that the data is safe and complies with the standards of the organizations. Next, the data is formatted into dimensional schemas for the most effective delivery to end users, business intelligence tools, data mining tools, OLAP cubes, and analytic applications. Finally, the system self-checks and can be tuned to optimize the performance of the overall data migration process. Question: What are some of the standard data formats in a data migration system? Answer. Data formats most systems can manage include flat files, virtually any DBMS system, normalized entity relationship schemas, XML datasets, and dimensional data models. Question: Can you explain what a data migration validator is and how it is used in data migration? Answer: The process of validation within a data migration project is meant to make the extraction of data from a variety of sources and integration of the data into the data warehouse easier and faster. Its function combines extraction, loading, and validation of the data into a single process. The data validation tool is agnostic with regard to the type of files it can work with. Question: What operations are executed in a data migration system and in what order? Answer: This is another technical question. The beauty of this question is that not only is it asking you to define the steps, but also asks what order in which they are performed. The typical data migration system consists of three distinct operations. These include extracting the data from the data source, which can be an Oracle, Microsoft, or any other relational database, transforming the data by performing a data cleansing and validation process, and writing the data into the target database or data warehouse. Question: Can you describe the roles and responsibilities of a data migration team? Answer: This is a general question which the interviewer will likely ask early in the process. Your response will give them some insight into your background and your understanding of both the data migration process and the roles that the administrators play in moving data from one source to another. The data migration team has several roles and responsibilities. Their primary responsibility is to ensure the data is extracted from sources and moved to the database in an efficient and trustworthy manner. The duties the team performs include extracting data from the original sources, assuring the quality and cleaning the data, applying labels and measures to the data, and delivering the data in a format that can be used by query tools, report writers, and dashboards. Question: Why is it important to analyze the impact of changes in a data migration system? Answer: This is another operational question which the interviewer is using to determine the depth of your knowledge in this field. Examining the metadata associated with an object determines how it is impacted by a change in its structure or content. Changing data can break processes that are crucial to the function of the data warehouse. Allowing ad hoc changes to data staging objects could be detrimental. Once a table is created in the staging area, you must perform an impact analysis before any changes are made to it. Many data migration tool vendors provide impact analysis functionality. Question: What is the best way to process a fixed length flat file? Answer: Your response should be in the form of a step-by-step -step description of what you would do to accomplish this task. A fixed length file layout should include the file name, where the field begins, its length, and its data type, which will usually be text or number. You only need to supply those layout information once. The tool will remember this and expect a similar format for subsequent fixed length flat files. Data validation is essential in this process in case the format of the data has changed. The most likely change will occur if the data includes a date field. Question: What is the difference between an initial load and a full load process in the context of data migration? Answer: By asking this question, the interviewer is testing your knowledge about different terms and processes involved with data migration. In the context of data migration, the initial load is the process for populating all data warehousing tables for the first time. Full load also refers to the first time a data warehouse is populated. 
However, using the full load process, all the records are loaded in one batch after all the contents of the table have been erased. Question. What then is meant by an incremental load? Answer. Incremental load refers to applying dynamic changes after the initial or full load process. These are performed as needed or when required in a specific period or on predefined schedules. Question. With regard to data migration, what is referred to as a three-tier system? Answer. This is another question that will test your knowledge of data migration and data warehousing. A three-tiered system refers to the data warehouse. The middle tier serves as the interface to both the users on the front end and the data on the back end. It is what retrieves the data based on the user queries and makes it available in a usable and secure format. The front end is the users, and the back end is where the data is stored. Question. What are views, and how do they differ from materialized views? Answer. In this technical question, you are being asked to define and compare two different but similar terms. Views are representations of the data that are contained in the table. Views are created using the attributes of one or more tables. A view of a single table can be updated, but those with multiple tables cannot. Materialized views are created from an aggregated table which contains data from either fact tables or dimension tables. Materialized views can be updated. Question. What is a power center as it relates to data migration, and what is the difference between a power center and a power mart? Answer. A power center is a function within the data migration process which connects with data sources and extracts information from them. The sources are ERP applications, including SAP, Oracle Apps, and PeopleSoft. Power centers process large volumes of data, whereas a power mart processes small volumes. Question. Can you discuss round robin and hash partitioning in more detail? Answer. In round robin partitioning, the data is evenly distributed among all partitions. Using round robin partitioning is appropriate when the number of rows in each of the partitions is the same. Hash partitioning applies a hash function to partition keys to group data among the partitions. The results in a group of rows being processed with the same partitioning key in the same partition. Question. What is meant by an operational data store and how it works? Answer. An interviewer will ask you this question to continue to probe your knowledge of data migration and learn how you use this particular technique in managing a data warehouse environment. An operational data store or ODS is where the data is depository between the staging area and the data warehouse. The ODS acts as a temporary data warehouse allowing operators to analyze the business data before fully populates the tables in the data warehouse. Data can remain in the ODS anywhere from minutes to weeks, depending on the need for the data and the operational characteristics of the organization. Question. How are the tables in data migration analyzed, and when does the analysis occur? Answer. The tables in a data migration process are analyzed by reviewing the statistics generated using the analyze command. The same statistics can be used by a cost-based optimizer to create a data retrieval plan. The analyze statement also supports the creation of the objects, structures, space management, and other operations within the data warehouse tables. The tables are analyzed either when the index table is created or when the cluster is complete. Question. How do you fine-tune the mapping of the data during data migration? Answer. There are several steps involved in the fine-tuning of the mapping of data during a migration process. You can use a filter to qualify the data, utilize persistence to create a cache during the lookup operation, aggregate the data, sort it by a group, and use operators when writing the functions. Another technique is to increase the cache size and commit intervals. Question. Can you define the term workflow and discuss how it is used in the context of data migration? Answer. In the context of a data migration project, the term workflow refers to the progression of tasks that are executed during the data migration. Creating an efficient workflow expedites the migration process and results in a table within the data warehouse, which is more useful and has greater integrity. Question. Can you explain the differences between a connected and a disconnected lookup and when you should use each of them in a data migration? Answer. The two types of lookups are called connected and disconnected. A connected lookup is used for mapping and will return multiple values. 
It is called connected because it can be tied to another transformation, on the other hand, and disconnected lookup is used when it cannot be connected to another transformation, it returns a single value, but it is reusable. Question: How to ensure data integrity during migration? Answer: We can maintain data integrity during migration by the following measures, ensuring rigorous quality control, creating and monitoring the audit trails, designing process maps, mitigating security vulnerabilities during migration, implementing error detection software. Question: Explain the data migration process in the SQL Server. Answer: Typically, a data migration process in an SQL Server comprises four steps. Data extraction from source to an intermediate server, changing data formats to the one prescribed at the destination, cleansing and aggregating data, loading the cleansed and aggregated data to the desired database. Question: What is the meaning of data cleansing in a migration process? Why is it important? Answer: Data cleansing refers to the process of determining missing or invalid records in a dataset and modifying the columns and tuples accordingly. Cleansing is an essential step in data migration as it enhances database quality, making the process more productive. Question: What is dirty data? Give some examples. Answer: Data that is responsible for the loss of data integrity in a database is called dirty data. Some examples of dirty data are misspelled words, typing mistakes, redundant data, and so on. Question: What do you mean by tracing level? Answer: Tracing level refers to the amount of data that a log file contains. It has two types: one, normal, and second, verbose. Question: What is the data migration testing? Answer: Migration testing is a verification process of migration of the legacy system to the new system with minimal disruption, downtime, with data integrity and no loss of data, while ensuring that all the specified functional and non-functional aspects of the application are met post-migration. Migration testing verifies the process of migrating the data from the legacy or current system to the new target system. It does so with limited downtime and no loss of data or issues with data integrity. In addition, it does so while making sure functional and non-functional requirements, expectations of the application are met post-migration. Question: Why do we need data migration test? Answer: As we know, the application migration to a new system could be for various reasons: system consolidation, obsolete technology, optimization, or any other reasons. Hence while the system in use needs to be migrated to a new system it is essential to ensure the below points any kind of disruption inconvenience caused to the user due to migration needs to be avoided or minimized like downtime loss of data need to ensure if the user can continue to use all the features of the application to ensure compatibility of the new upgraded application with the hardware and software that the legacy application supports to ensure the existing functionalities works as in the legacy application seamlessly critical defects related to the data and data type need to be identified and fixed during testing to ensure no performance degradation post migration to ensure if the connection between servers hardware software and therefore the data flow between different components remains intact question what are the test phases in migration testing answer The different phases of migration test need to be considered: one, pre-migration testing; two, data cleansing; three, post-migration testing. Question: What are the major activities in data migration testing strategy? Answer: Designing the test strategy for migration include a set of activities to be performed and few aspects to be considered. This is to minimize the errors and risks that occur as a result of migration and to perform the migration testing effectively. Specialized team formation, business risk analysis, possible errors analysis, migration scope analysis and identification. Identify the appropriate tool for migration. Identify the appropriate test environment for migration. Migration test specification document and review. and production launch of the migrated system question have you ever faced any challenges in data migration testing answer challenges faced in this testing are mainly with data below are few in the list data quality 
truncation and precision of data data type and data mismatch data loss null data translation data volume extra records simulation of a real-time environment unclear missing requirements and extraneous or duplicate records question how will you select the right data migration tool answer Proper planning is the most important part of any data migration effort and should include consideration of data sources and destinations, security, and cost. Selecting a data migration tool is a key component in the planning process and should be based on the organization's use case and business requirements. 1. Data sources and destinations. 2. Reliability. 3. Performance and scalability. 4. Security. 5. Pricing. Question. What is Salesforce Data Migration? Answer. Salesforce Data Migration is the process of moving or transferring data from the Salesforce to the destination such as databases, data warehouses, or applications. This process also helps in cleaning the data and optimizing it. Some of the characteristics of data after Salesforce Data Migration are listed below. Complete. All necessary details should be contained for all users relevant what the information needs should be included accuracy details contained should be accurate timeliness data should be available when you need it accessibility data should be accessible whenever we need it validity correct format required reliability data should contain authentic information uniqueness no record duplicates should exist question what are some data migration examples answer Typically, data migration occurs during an upgrade of existing hardware, transfer to a completely new system, or instances such as application replacements, business process changes, data volume growth, or the need for better performance. Some examples of when a data migration might be needed. Merges and acquisitions. Modernizing for performance, for example, two legacy systems create problems of performance, duplicate data incompatibility. Moving to the cloud is also often the driver for a data migration. Moving a data warehouse from one database to another. Question. What is the difference in data migration, data conversion and data integration? Answer. Note that data migration is not the same thing as data conversion or data integration. Data migration is moving data between storage devices, locations, or systems, includes subsets like quality assurance, cleansing, validation, and profiling. Data conversion transforms data from a legacy application to an updated or new application. The process is ETL, extract, transform, load. Data integration combines stored data residing in different systems to create a unified view and global analytics. Question. What is the difference between data migration vs data replication? Answer. Let's imagine data migration as a one-time and one-way journey. During this process, the information travels from its original storage or location to the new one. After this process, the primary storage is usually abandoned. Data replication is a continuous process during which the information is periodically transported to the target location. The original source of information is never deleted or abandoned. Both the original and target locations serve as backup. If the data source is no longer needed, data replication turns into a data migration process. At the same time, data replication can be a part of the data integration process that was described above. Question. What is the difference between data migration and ETL? Answer. Data migration and ETL are fairly comparable in that they include moving data starting with one source then on to the next. In any case, data migration doesn't include changing the arrangement, while ETL does. ETL and data integration are both utilized when associations need to get more out of the data they have. Be that as it may, data integration doesn't include changing data, all things considered. Question. What are the types of important ETL tools and their use? Answer. Choosing the ETL tool is important. You need to think about a lot of variables while picking the right ETL tool as indicated by the venture. Choosing the ETL tool for a particular task is an exceptionally essential move even you need it for a little venture. Ensure that ETL tool movements are no little endeavors. Data connectivity. Performance. Flexibility. 
data quality, flexible data acquisition options, and committed ETL vendor. Question, what are the different types of data migration tools? Answer, on-premise data migration tools, open source data migration tools, cloud-based data migration tools. Question, what are some data migration tools? Answer, we have discussed in our data migration tutorials on our channel. Companies are spending billions of dollars in migrating data in migrating systems, yet many of the new systems fail to meet expectations. Choosing the right set of data migration tools is one of the reason of success or failure of data. These are only some of the data migration tools, if you would like to look at their reviews, please go to the video link in the description or log on to softwaretestingportal.com. Data migration tools are 1. Carbonite Availability 2. Migration Manager 3. Virta Move, formerly App0 4. Citrix App DNA 5. Rocket Tape, Copy 6. Flexera Admin Studio 7. IQ Cloud 8. Application Analyzer 9. Impetus Workload Migration 10. IBM Lyft so friends, hope this tutorial of data migration interview questions and answers will prove useful in your data migration interviews. Please like, share, subscribe and comment so that we are motivated enough to come up with such knowledge sharing videos. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.